you, friends, as we have gathered to listen to His voice. His voice. Let's close our eyes for a moment, bring ourselves into the presence of the Spirit, and we pray. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful, and kindle in them the fire of your love. A reading from the Gospel according to Mark, chapter three, verses. 20 onwards. And the crowd came together again so that they could not even eat. When his family heard it, they went out to restrain him, for people were saying he has gone out of his mind. And the scribes who came down from Jerusalem said, He has Beelzebul, and by the rulers of the demons he has cast out demons. And he called them to him and spoke to them in parables. How can Satan cast out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house is divided against itself, that house will not be able to stand. And if Satan has risen up against himself and is divided, he cannot stand. But his end has come. But no one can enter a strong man's house and plunder his property without first trying Without first tying up the strong man, then indeed the house can be plundered. Truly I tell you, people will be forgiven for their sins and whatever blasphemies they utter, but whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit can never have forgiveness, but is guilty of an eternal sin. The Gospel of the Lord. Dear friends, one of the uh, a statement in the scriptures in the gospels that can always be very disturbing is when Jesus says, "Every sin is forgiven, but whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit can never have forgiveness." In Ephesians chapter, in Ephesians chapter four, we would read verse thirty. Ephesians four verse thirty, the scripture says, Saint Paul says. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God with which you were marked with a seal for the day of redemption. Do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God. So can we grieve the Spirit of God? Is it possible to grieve the Spirit of God? In, in the scriptures we read about a lot of, lot of promises connected to the Holy Spirit and more so we see of responses to those promises. Responses that different people gave all through the scripture. David, we, re we read in Mark chapter 12 verse 36, David, inspired by the Holy Spirit, is speaking. So David was open to the promptings of the Holy Spirit. And that's, that's so important for us to understand that we are called to be open to the promptings of the Holy Spirit as David was open to the promptings of the Holy Spirit. David's, David himself, by the Holy Spirit, declared. Prompted by the Holy Spirit, he declared. We had prophet Simeon in the scripture in Luke chapter 2, verse 25 onwards. The word says, prompted by the Spirit, he was led into the temple. We read about John the Baptist, Luke 1, 15. John the Baptist prompted by the Holy Spirit, he spoke. Going to Acts of the Apostles, Acts chapter 4, verse 8, Acts chapter 4, verse 31, filled with the Holy Spirit, they were prompted to speak God's word. Acts 13, verse 2, the Spirit told them, set apart for me, and they set apart someone for them, for the Spirit. Every time the Spirit spoke, they responded. They were open to the promptings of the Holy Spirit. So how do we grieve the Holy Spirit? We grieve the Holy Spirit when we are closed to the promptings of the Spirit. When we do not give Him the importance or His voice the importance as the voice of God. And we have a tendency to close our ears to the promptings of the Spirit. What marked these people out through the scriptures was the fact that they were open to the promptings of the Spirit. That's why even so beautifully, when it came to the temptation of Jesus, it says, Jesus led by the Spirit into the wilderness. 
even the Lord being open to the promptings of the Spirit, how much more are we called to be open to the promptings of the Holy Spirit? To know that the Spirit is God's voice that is whispering into our hearts, something that is good for our soul, something that's healthy for our soul. The problem we have to being open to the promptings of the Holy Spirit is because there's always, there's always a battle between our flesh and our soul. The battle between what the Spirit wants for the good of our body and soul, but what our flesh desires only for our comforts. Satan always tries to comfort our flesh, but the Spirit does what is healthy for our body and soul. And there's always a battle, and that's why St. Paul would speak about this battle in Romans chapter 7, verse 14 to 17. Romans chapter 7. Verses 14 to 17. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am of the flesh, sold into the slavery under sin. I do not understand my own actions, for I do not want, for I do not do what I want, but I do the very thing that I hate. He puts it so beautifully I do not do the things that I want to do, but I do the things that I hate. What I know is wrong. Why? I do it is when I close my ears to the promptings of the Holy Spirit. Nowadays you have, you have children who, who put on earphones. They are in the car with you, they'll put on earphones. They are walking with you, they'll put on earphones. They are in the house, they put on earphones. Why? One reason is pretty obvious. They cut out everything else, any other voice from outside. And especially the voice of their parents. When I, was, when I was young, if I didn't want to do something my mother asked me to do, when she called out from one room to the other and I know that she's going to make me do some work that I won't enjoy, I see to it that I close my ears. If I don't physically do it, I will see to it that at least emotionally I close my ears. But I will not respond to it. And that is how we are. When our children, when our children put on earphones, they're cutting off their, your voice from their ears. And sometimes we do this with the Holy Spirit as well. We are not open to the promptings of the Holy Spirit. We close off our ears is because there's some kind of joy we are getting from the wrong that we are doing. Something that is bringing pleasure to my body. That is how Satan spoke to, to Eve. Put that into her ears. That this will be good for you. You will become like God. Eat of the forbidden fruit. And that is what she kept listening to. It was now comfortable. And then when God walks in, the two of them go and hide. They don't want to be prompted anymore. They go and hide. And that is what can happen to us very often when we are closed to the promptings of the Holy Spirit. And that is what grieves the Spirit of God. We are, after all, as 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16 says, you are the temple of the Holy Spirit. God's Spirit dwells in you. And all the time the Spirit actually is prompting us in our decision making, the Spirit prompt us, prompts us. There will be times when we will hear those no's. There will be times when the Spirit will tell us, be cautious. There will be times when the Spirit will tell us that relationship is not healthy for you. There will be times when the, when the Spirit will tell us or call us into moments of prayer. Let us not be closed to the promptings of the Holy Spirit for when we are close to the promptings of the Holy Spirit, that is what grieves the Spirit far more than anything else. And even as we are, as we are preparing ourselves for Pentecost, remember, at Pentecost, we are, not getting, um, we are not getting the Spirit for the first time. The Spirit has been received into our hearts on the day of our baptism. But maybe because of our own our own joys, our own pleasures that we want, we've kind of silenced the voice of the Spirit. Let's not grieve the Spirit anymore by silencing His voice. Give, magnify the voice of the Spirit. Let the voice of the Spirit pierce our hearts so that when we reach Pentecost and we prepare for Pentecost, there's a rekindling of the fire of the Spirit. It's the rekindling of the voice of the Spirit. And that is when the Spirit will never be grieved. Let us be children of God who goes forth into the world 
being prompted by the Spirit of God. Just as it was in the Acts of the Apostles, as he kept prompting them, telling them, you go to Asia now, you do not do this now, give this person to me now. And they kept responding to the promptings of the Spirit. That is how people saw the power of the Spirit in them. Let that be our, our story as well. When we go forth from this Pentecost, when we cry for the rekindling of the fire of the Spirit, when we go forth, let the promptings of the Holy Spirit be magnified as the voice of God in our heart. And let us never grieve the Spirit of God. Let's close eyes for a moment. O Spirit of Jesus, so many times you have spoken to us and we have cut out your voice because we found it challenging to our own pleasure and our comforts. But we pray today, O Spirit of God, speak to us. Let your voice be magnified within our hearts that we might be prompted, prompted for the glory of God and let us respond to those promptings for the glory of God. And so let us never grieve you by killing out your voice, drowning out your voice in the midst of our comforts. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you all.